happy Sunday. Getting ready for the live stream. What is new with everyone? It's a gorgeous Sunday afternoon. I love October. I'm really glad I live somewhere where Octobers are this pretty. It's so beautiful. I just need to pull it up here. Alrighty, hi. Welcome to the Sewing Bee Live. This is Sunday afternoon, October 11th. Everything is um, gorgeous outside. The colors are beautiful. If you don't live in a part of the country where the colors turn, can I just say, take a drive up this way sometime because it is just, God just has a paintbrush. It's just so beautiful. Hello, Secret Siren. Hi, Kathy Ann. Hi, Elizabeth. Hello, Stitch Stamp Sew Repeat. <laughs> nice to see you guys. I have a big winner today. I hope, I hope, hope, hope this person is on the chat. We shall see. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Sadie. Good to see you. Glad you could make it today. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Phyllis. Nice to see you. I'm glad you could join us today. That's awesome. All right. Hi, Barbara. Nice to see you. I'm going to fix my camera angle. It would appear that I am a little bit like in a hole here. <laughs> I think that will be better. Can y'all hear me okay? Hopefully you can all hear me. Chicago is gorgeous this time of year too. I love Chicago. Hi Rosa. You can't get motivated to sew. Oh, you know, that happens to everyone. I had a like, I don't know, last month. I usually make like eight or nine things every month and I think I only made like four and I, at the end of the month I was like what what was wrong with me I don't know why I just didn't make very much last month and I think it's just you know it's the change of seasons and um, you know just bored being at home I guess I don't know but yeah everybody goes through those slumps did you watch my sojo video maybe there's a couple of things in there to get you sparked and sometimes it's the project sometimes it's a project that you just need to maybe put down for a while because maybe it's just got a total block and if you put it down and do something else and go back to it maybe it will be you know better hi Karen nice to see you oh I bet it is gorgeous in Wisconsin hi Leslie I'm so, I apologize for my stuffy nose today along with those beautiful Octobers, <laughs> brings allergies. And so that's what, you know, that's what we deal with, but it's worth it because it's so gorgeous out there. Hello, Anna, Sarah, Carolyn. Oh good, I'm glad y'all are here today. I have a good tip for you today and a winner. Somebody gets to pick a free Love Notions pattern. So I'm hoping that whoever it is, it will be on the chat today. I know who it is, but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> All right. So what are you, um, let's see. So you're so Joe. What uh, what are you making? What pattern is it that you're stuck on? Maybe, maybe I or I tell you what. This group of ladies has some like fantastic ideas. Maybe there's something that somebody could say or do that will would give you some inspiration. 
Um, I know this is like a spring jacket, but I love butterflies, so I wore it anyway. <laughs> I don't get to wear this enough. Um, I made this last year. This is the uh, uh, Atinus, I don't know how to say it, Atinus, Atinus jacket by Itch to Stitch. And um, I did it with Karina. We did a collaboration. And I made it out of this butterfly canvas, and I just love butterflies. So, um, but then in the spring, it was so weird. We didn't go anywhere. So I didn't get to wear it at all. And then today, it was cooler out, and I was like, you know, I don't care. <laughs> if I want to wear my springy colors, I'm just going to wear them. <laughs> so here I am. And, you know, the saying on my shirt kind of has the same colors. So I just wore it. <laughs> Tony, hi! She had a busy week, so didn't get a chance to watch any of the Love Notions videos. Oh, well, you know what? You can go, but they'll be there. So you can always go back and look at them. And, you know, they won't have an, another sale this year, but they generally do have one early in another year. So perhaps in right after Christmas, you know, that kind of time frame, you'll, if you're making lists, at least that's what they did last year. So... If you're making lists and, you know, saving up for a sale, that's probably a good bet. <laughs> they don't do Black Friday. Last year, well, not last year, but the year before, um, I had just, you know, I, I, I wasn't an ambassador or anything. I was just a, a fan of their patterns. And I thought, oh, they'll have a sale on Black Friday. And then I, they, they didn't. So I kind of missed out on that and I had to, you know, buy some for Christmas gifts. So I had to pay regular price, but they're worth it though, even at regular price. Ah, Sarah's making a classic tee with a cowl neck. Oh, well, you know what? That's what our, our tip is going to be turtlenecks today. Um, uh, just, you know, it's a, it's a quick tip, but the behind me, that's a, classic tea that I made. Whoops, did I go the other way? This way. Um, that's a classic tea with a turtleneck that I made yesterday. And I was just going to kind of give you the, you know, the scoop on um, how I do that. So I will, um, I'm at 315, like always, I'll do the tip. But that's basically what it is today. So, all right. See, I gotta catch up. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Mary Alice. Nice to see you. Hi, Chris. Hi, Susie's. <laughs> Hi, Lisa, Carolyn, Leslie. Oh, wow. That's going back a little ways, Leslie. You're watching the Friday Sewing School Sew Along of the Classic Tea. Yep, that was a lot of fun, and um, that was many classic teas ago for me. <laughs> I've made so many of those, and then just today I decided, I don't know, I've put on a little weight, I think. I was losing, but I just noticed this morning that my t-shirts are a little tighter than they were, um, so I think maybe I'm going to have to break out the full bust piece for the next one, but, you know, it's okay. <laughs> Oh, you've been sewing with knits, so they're forgiving, huh? Oh, you had problems with placket and a neckband. Just doesn't look real smooth. Yeah, it can... Plackets can be interesting. Um, I think the best advice I can give for a placket is really, really, really detailed measurements and stay stitching and clipping them. If you clip it right to that specific corner point, um, that's when it, you know, will end up looking right. It's, it's real hard. Um, I mean, it's not real hard, but I mean, it's difficult until you do it a couple times and, um, yeah, plackets can be really, really interesting. Hi, Gail. Hi, Peggy. Nice to see everybody. Hi, Paula. Good to see you. 
Hi, Becky. Okay, Becky, you had me crying in your last video. Can I just say that? You're talking about losing pets, and I was laying on the couch. We just got home from church, and I decided I was going to do watch a couple of YouTube videos and take a rest before coming up here to do this live chat. So I turned on Becky um, in her uh, video about the... Um, loss of pets and my sweet little mini was laying on the floor beside me i mean i started crying buckets <laughs> it was so good hi ingrid hi lisa under stitching on the flounce and band okay okay what were you making tony i gotta go back here oh the willow dress you melted the fabric into the flounce oh i hate that and prop, they take up a lot of fabric, so you probably don't have enough to make another flounce. Yeah, that's hard. Um, yeah, pressing cloths, I guess. I um, It's the weirdest things that will melt, like things that would, like I was, um, I was uh, sewing something that was going just fine, pressing it, and then all of a sudden I got to a seam and it, it stuck on the iron and I don't know, you know, I don't know if the iron got hotter or, or what happened, but it absolutely just locked me. So I kind of hope my iPad doesn't die here because it's like at 8%. I have it plugged in, but hi, Brenda. Nice to see you. Thank you for the Kofi very much. So I, let's see, this week, last week was all of notions. I, um, I made like something every single day that week or last week. So I'm, I'm kind of like, I need probably a day out of the sewing room tomorrow. Just, you know, to keep my, you know, sometimes you can just do it too much and then it just starts catching up with you. So I don't want to ruin it. So I'll probably take a day off tomorrow. And then I am going to be doing the serger video, the, the part three. It ended up being three parts because I thought, why not do the serge along that I did with the classic tea? So um, I am going to do the last serger video with some special stitches, like how to gather, um, how to do a blind hem, how to flat lock, and how to gather with clear elastic. So those are going to be my... Um, Four things I'm going to show you and also someone wanted me to thread show you how the how to thread the old one and it's a bear and I'll try <laughs> but I will show you you'll see me frustrate frustrated and you'll know why I chose to get a different one um, let's see what else have I got going this week more Christmas. I need to sew. Uh, I have a ton of things to do. My husband is unemployed, so Christmas is going to be different this year. So it's going to be largely homemade, um, but I have fabric, and I have time, and I have, you know, uh, everything I need to make that happen. So I'm going to be sewing Christmas. Uh, next Sunday, I have a live, not live, well, I do have a live on Sunday, but I have a video coming out on Sunday, which is a collaboration uh, of NFL proportion with Natita from So Natural Dane. She and I are both doing the game day tea in our favorite NFL teams, which is not Cleveland. I don't know if you guys have been here on other chats, but usually when Cleveland scores, you can hear even on my channel, out the window and across the street, his cowbell when Cleveland scores. Everybody on our street knows when Cleveland does something good. <laughs> but no, my husband is a huge Steelers fan. And I really, the only football I really care about is my Buckeyes, but um, for him, I will wear Steeler gear and be excited about Steelers. So I'm gonna do a throwback Steelers thing because my hubby, and I have been Steeler people since like Terry Bradshaw. So I'm gonna throw it back a little and um, do sort of more vintage ones. And Natita is a Packer fan, so 
we're gonna both sh uh, share how we, you know, turn the game day tee into um, jerseys. So, or jerseys or t-shirts, fan shirts, whatever. Um, yeah, so I'm excited about that. I'm actually gonna do one for my hubby too, because you know, he worked so hard. And then, you know, to be really at the top of your game, you know, a senior project engineer, dream job he had, and then COVID came and structural engineers can't work if people aren't building things and that's just the bottom line of it. So, you know, he's a little depressed. So I wanna, you know, I just wanted to cheer him up. So I'm gonna make him that. And I should put it away for Christmas, but I don't think I will. I think I'll get it to him. <clears throat> Oh, your husband was a diehard Steelers fan. That's sweet, Teresa. Love that. Let's see, have you ever tried tie dental floss to the thread? No, that's a good idea. When you thread the loopers. Hmm. What would that why not just tie the thread to the thread? I'm trying to figure out why why that would be different. Unless maybe because it's stiffer, it goes through easier, I guess. Explain to me how that helps. Because <laughs> I think I know, but I'm a little dense. <laughs> Sorry. You have to put pockets on all your man's shirts. <laughs> yeah, you know, I love and hate pockets. I love wearing them. I don't like making them. And I made this jacket. I, I opted not to put the welt pockets in because I thought I never use those on a jean jacket. And now I go like this. <laughs> There's no pockets there. I don't think I'll be skipping them again um, if I ever make this this one again. But whatever jean jacket I end up making, I'm sure I'm not not going to skip the pockets next time. Allison says, in the UK, a Liverpool football fan. They did really well last season. Cool. I just want to go to Liverpool because I'm a huge Beatles fan. So <laughs> I want to go to the Cavern. <laughs> just, you know, Penny Lane. Uh, yeah. I got to go, go someday to all those Beatles sites. <laughs> Thank you so much, Allison. We're... Uh, we're hoping he had a really, really promising two interviews and they were both phone interviews. And then they said they wanted to schedule a face to face, which it sounded like they were moving along. And they said like two weeks or not two weeks ago, but I guess a week ago now, well, on Friday, a week ago, Friday, they said, we'll call you back first of the week to set up a face to face interview. And then they never called. So I don't know, you know, he thinks that maybe he's not going to get it. But I still think that, you know, they probably would have answered his email and said, you know, hey, we moved on or whatever if he wasn't still in the running. But we'll see. Uh, hopefully something will turn up for him. Um, he's a really hard worker. He's really good at what he does. Um, so eventually he'll get Hi, Chris Renee. She says, I always make my gifts for my mom and sister because handmade items are more special than store-bought. So true. This year I'm sewing my sister project bag and set for her crochet. Oh, that's so nice. That's a great gift. You guys gave me some great ideas. Last week I was asking for ideas for like little gifts for people that you just want to give a little something to. Um, like my uh, little, little teenager pastor's daughter, you know, that kind of stuff. And um, just, they came up with scrunchies and, you know, just different things like that. And I thought, well, why not get her, make her some scrunchies and then like maybe buy her a brush and, you know, give her just a whole bunch of stuff for her hair. She has nice long hair, so I think maybe I might do that. Hi, Denson. This is the Atinus pattern from Itch to Stitch. It's a jean jacket pattern. It was a, I did a video on this one when I made it. 
I guess it would probably be last spring at some time, or no, actually that last fall, and um, I made it thinking I would wear it in the spring. I was just saying how I wore it today anyway, even though it's a springy jacket, but in the spring we just weren't going anywhere and I wanted to wear my jacket. <laughs> Sarah, I, um, as far as the cover stitch thread, I change just the two. I usually leave, just like my serger, how I said I usually have either white, black, or gray. I do the same thing with my cover stitch. Unless I just happen to have a cone the same color. But usually I just will have the, the spool of thread from the sewing machine and then the bobbin from the sewing machine. And that's what I use on my cover stitch usually. Because you can use a bobbin if you didn't know that. You can, you don't have to have a big spool to put on the cover stitch. You can actually just fill up a bobbin and put that on there. It works fine. As long as there's no, like, nothing for the thread to get hung up on. On the bobbin, you know how sometimes there's a little thing that'll make it not come off real easy. Oh, hello! So Debbie, right? Debbie Miller? Yeah, great. I'm glad. Um, you know, that is just uh, Debbie. Debbie's from Taylor, Michigan, which is about 45 minutes from here. I live in Perrysburg, Debbie, which is Toledo area, but I'm right where um, the Ohio Turnpike crosses I-75. So that's right where I live. And um, yeah, she's from Taylor, Michigan. And when I was running my photography business, they have this cute little chapel in Taylor, Michigan. It's um, just this little white chapel in a park. And I did tons of weddings at that chapel. Yeah, so it has a has a nice, um, I always loved working there, so. Yeah. Dee's from Grand Rapids, how oh, fun. Oh, that's a good idea, Sarah, to, when you use a bobbin to stick it on top of another bobbin so that it spins freely. I mean, those nets, does anybody really use those nets that come with your um, cover stitch and serger? I never do. Um, you're supposed to use them if you use a regular spool, but I don't know. I've never had any problems using the regular spools, so... I, Nicole, my, I closed my business, um, uh, actually almost exactly a year, four years ago. I had a fall down the stairs, which I never actually really recovered from. My, um, I tore my left quadriceps tendon to shreds. So, um, I never really rehabbed very well from it. They didn't diagnose it properly and I had surgery late. And so I can no longer walk on uneven surfaces, you know, without, like, I have to be super, super careful. And also the steps I have to do, like, one at a time. I mean, I'm pretty mobile. It's not like I'm really handicapped or anything. I just have to go slower. And honestly, when you're shooting weddings, you've got to move so fast. So um, I did it for, like, that, that year after, and then it was just too hard. So, and it's not fair to a couple to say, you know, wait a minute, I'm coming, you know, and I was, I was paying so much to my assistants because they were doing so much of the work. So, yeah, I just decided it was time to shut the door. So I did. But I loved it. I did um, over 600 weddings. So it was a, a beautiful time. But this is beautiful too. God, God never closes a door that he doesn't open a window. And, you know, I was really down in the dumps and feeling sort of uh, useless. And one day I just thought, you know, I love to sew. I've always loved to sew. I'm pretty good at it. You know, I mean, not really good at it. There are people way better than me. But, you know, I, I do. I'm a good teacher. I know that. And so I thought, maybe I could start a YouTube channel. So just on a whim, I did that. And now I'm like, oh, my gosh, look what God has done. It's like 12,000 subscribers. And it's awesome. And, you know, it's just accidental, really. <laughs> so, but I'm loving every minute of it. And I don't miss photography anymore because I am doing something else creative. So, once in a while, I get a little 
paying, you know, when I see people out photographing brides and stuff. Um, I did, I had a good career. I had a really good career in, in wedding photography. I had some international awards and traveled all over the world. So yeah, it's been, it's, it was a fun, fun thing, 19 years, but this is even better, so. Aw, Lisa, you're so sweet. Thank you. Thank you, Ingrid. Hi, Linda, from Morristown, New Jersey, where it's overcast in 67. <laughs> Working on Simplicity 8637, which is a wrap dress. Okay. You had to do a substantial FBA. Yeah, wrap dresses are are um, could, are interesting with FBAs. I mean, you know, you kind of kind of make sure they come up high enough, and yeah. But how wonderful when a wrap dress really fits, because if you're a, a larger busted lady, you can't wear a ready to. I mean, at least I can't go buy a ready to wear wrap dress and and be okay with it. I'd have to wear a cami under it always, but not the willow. I can wear that willow without anything underneath it so it's pretty awesome when you can make your own and have it fit thanks B I I appreciate that but you know we never go through anything that isn't um, meant to make us stronger so um, in retrospect I I'm glad I'm not doing weddings in the middle of COVID I will tell you that my friends in the wedding business literally have lost everything because there just aren't weddings this year. I mean, not to the degree that there was. And not only that, the ones they do have, people are not following the protocol. They're dancing two feet apart with no masks and, you know, and, and with a contract, they're required to be there. So um, I'm kind of glad I'm not in the middle of the wedding business right now because I think it's pretty it's pretty tough for them right now. I do pray for my friends in the wedding business. It's probably, you know, went from up here to like nothing. So any, any of the entertainment businesses too, like movie theaters, you know, you just got to really feel for those people. So at least I know eventually can you hear me? Cause I just noticed that my, Hmm. Hear me better now? I just noticed that my microphone wasn't plugged in. Can you hear me now? Sorry about that. I, I don't know how you were hearing me because my, I guess it was just the microphone through the phone. Is this better now, now though? Good. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> All right. It is 322, so I'm five minutes late to give you your tip. Okay, so if you want to make a turtleneck, I, would, I started with, like, this is a turtleneck back here for... This is a classic tee. I don't know if I can bring that closer. I don't know if you can see that. Hang on. There. Sorry for moving around so much, but I think you can see that better now. All right, so that is a... Um, classic tee and I did a turtleneck. Now I like my turtlenecks not to be real high. I just don't like anything really tied up against my neck. So I only did a, a like a, it was a, be a total of like a five and a half inch turtleneck. So what I did was I took the crew neckband piece. And if you don't have a crew neckband option, you could just raise up the scoop neck a little bit. And then if you don't have a neckband, you can um, 
because after you alter a scoop, then you wouldn't have the proper neckband. So just measure then the opening and do 90%. So it's a little bit more than if it were gonna lay flat. Um, but if you have a neckband, this works fine. So all you do is I took this and measured it and I made another pattern piece, the same exact width, but six inches tall. And this is on a fold right here. <laughs> this is on a fold. So then you just sew it and apply it just like it were a neckband and you get a turtleneck. And, you know, you could go higher if you like your turtlenecks higher. Um, I, just, I just don't like anything right up against my neck very much. So I love the look of a turtleneck, but I don't, I don't like wearing them. So <laughs> this is my compromise. But that was, I thought, kind of a fun thing to do. So if you live in a winter area and you want a little more warmth and you want to turn a classic tee into a turtleneck that's this is the classic t crew neckband piece and that's what i did just made it six inches taller and that's what i got so that's my tip for today <laughs> kim solomon she said she just ordered her first indie pattern it's it's for her son oh, that's awesome which pattern kim Thank you, Sarah. I hope that it'll help some of you. I, I always wondered, um, you know, I was thinking about how would I just, you know, rather than looking for another pattern, how can I just use what I know fits me and put a turtleneck on it? So, I don't know, I thought about it and um, looked and found a tutorial. Um, so that's, uh, and then I kind of refined it to the way I like my turtlenecks, so. And, you know, there's, I love that when you find a tutorial and then you kind of morph it to the way you like to do things. I'm sure you guys do that. Even with, you know, I'm sure you, the stuff I tell you, I'm sure you take it and make it even that much better for you. So I love that individualism that we have in, as sewists that we can do, you know, what we, what we want to do. All righty. So there's 81 people here. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Linda. I think I will announce the winner of the giveaway. I don't think she's here. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. But the winner of the giveaway for Love Notions, a free Love Notions pattern, is Valerie Tapper. I know she's in our Facebook group, so um, if she, Valerie, if you're on here, I need your email address so that I can have Tammy from Love Notion send you your coupon for a pattern. All right, what I did was I took all the comments from last week, there was like over almost 600 of them, and then I put that uh, total into a random number generator, and then I just counted out, starting from the beginning, counted out that many, um, comments and that's how I picked the winner so let's see who made the classic tea I'm not sure you mean who's making it like now <laughs> I'll be making more Yeah, it's funny. I think the microphone was just coming from my, I use my phone on Sundays and I think the microphone was just coming what was in my phone um, and not this. This is the, um, my actual microphone. So sorry, I probably just made a bit horrible sound when I grabbed that. All righty. So, um, so which, uh, which Love Notions patterns did y'all buy last week? I can't wait to see all these creations because I know everybody, um, everybody was shopping that much I know. <laughs> yeah, 
I'm grateful for this job too, Tony. I mean, I'm grateful. It's not a lot, but I'm grateful that at least in this time, you know, that I can contribute something. So that makes me feel really good. Now this is actually only a three inches high, um, Brenda. It's a, it's a really smaller turtleneck, so it's just that high. But if you wanted to go so, so it was higher, you could just extend it out like, you know, you could do 12 inches and then it would be like that or this high. So, I don't know, maybe some people might like it. Uh, eight inches might even be better for some people. But I kind of like the three inch because it's low. It just only sticks up about that much. And it's because it's, I did it on the crew neck, it's not like right up against constricting my neck. So, I, I'm weird. I don't like things up like constricting my neck too much. <laughs> Ladies boyfriend cardigan pattern, that's a goodie. Oh my goodness, that is such a goodie. I love that pattern. Um, I made a bunch of those for my granddaughters last year, the girls version. Boyfriend cardigan, Vanguard, Sloan, everyday play, dri play dress. Awesome, Kathy Ann. <laughs> I'm sorry I was an enabler. <laughs> Hi, Brenda. Oh yes, it's cut on the fold here. So, so it was, um, however long this is, doubled. And then the seam is here. Well, it's doubled, though, you know what I mean. <laughs> is it possible to make a t turtleneck shirt out of jersey knit? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You could make a, you could do the classic tee like I just did with jersey. That's absolutely possible. This is uh, cotton lycra, my favorite. You guys know I love that fabric. Um, it's a little bit thicker for winter. But you could just use an ordinary jersey. Any jersey would work. Um, I have some 100% cotton jersey. The only thing about that is that it does not have much recovery. If there's no spandex in it, it doesn't like, it'll stretch out and stay that way to wash it, you know, like jeans do. and it can make stuff like turtlenecks kind of like uh, stretch out and not look the greatest. Like the guy in the commercial that has the U-neck t-shirt when your V-neck looks like a U-neck. Have you guys know of that commercial? <laughs> I like V-necks too, Phyllis, very much. Brenda got dock side. Uh, let's see. Kim got Sabrina Slims and Belladonna. Awesome. Hi, Karen. Sorry, I, you slipped by and I just noticed. Uh, Karen X got La Belladonna Terra Tunic Rhapsody. Awesome. I love La Belladonna. It's such a great pattern. It really is. Leslie's has the raglan sleeve, raglan sleeve and Rhapsody blouse. So you got the um, Rockford. Brenda got the girl doll combo. Dockside game day. Ah, oh, awesome. Yeah, you got a, you got quite a haul there, Brenda. <laughs> You're going to be sewing like crazy for Christmas, aren't you? Right along with me. I, um, I'm going to be doing some serious hallmark movie watching and sewing that's what i do for christmas <laughs> oh kathy and that sounds lovely white uh five by three rib cotton spandex white and coral lovely you can do anything with those i mean you could do classic tees they would be a little more like the rib knit kind of tends to be a little more fitted the new pattern that's coming out soon from Love Notions, it's a, it's a real cute Henley. 
you will absolutely love that in rib knit. Um, classic tee, any of them really, uh, more of a top weight thing, I would guess, than bottom weight, unless it's super, super thick. Um, the uh, Serenity would be pretty. The, um, oh, any of them, really. And it has some spandex, so it'll behave a little better. See, without that spandex, you know, cotton's beautiful, breathable, you know, and, and linen is meant to be like wrinkled and stretched out. They grow, you know, they just grow and then you wash them and it goes back. Um, but in a knit, I don't know, sometimes it, it works in some garments, it doesn't in others. And I think necklines particularly, it doesn't work really well. So I use it my, I, I had bought some I like it, but um, I end up using it for muslins mostly because, well, it was $1.99, so I, that's the best kind of fabric to use for muslins. But um, yeah, I use it for fit to, pattern fit tests and stuff because when you, you know, it looks great for a couple hours and then as you wear it, it sort of stretches out and then you wash it and then it's back to normal again. Hi, Debbie. Thank you. Sarah's been hoarding rib knits and waffles waiting for the Henley to be released. This one is so nice. It's so feminine. If a, if a Henley can be feminine, this one is really feminine and very cute, very different. Hi, Carla. Carla had a knee injury at work, too. Uh, it was the beginning of the end of my nursing career. Yep. I'm actually have a uh, going way back. I'm an RN too, but <laughs> it was also a blessing. Excuse me, because I was able to have two years with my husband. Oh, Carla, I'm so sorry. That my, see, you know what? My husband might be unemployed, but I have him, so I should just be thankful, right? Bless your heart. Well, I'm glad that you had those two years together. Definitely. Uh, Jan Jansen Cotton Lycra, um, I've gotten from Girl Charlie. And I got a, one of those mystery boxes from Nick of Time, which I was pretty happy with. The quality of the fabric is awesome. Took a little longer to get here than I think it should have, but when it came, it had um, it was a mystery box, so I didn't know what colors I'd be getting, and I got a really nice selection of colors, and um, it was like eighty-five dollars, and it was I think forty yards of fabric, so it was amazing, and um, it's super good quality. So um, I'll probably do that again. I'm starting to get my my. Um, quantity depleted so I'm probably gonna order one of those boxes again eventually but um, really really super nice um, but they take a long time I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna lie I waited like a month for that stuff so don't if it's a project you need it in a hurry there uh, I would go girl Charlie um, that's where I get a lot of my cotton lycra and it's really nice. Um, but pay, gotta pay attention though because they have cotton lycra and then they have cotton lycra blend or cotton spandex blend and that's a little thinner and more of a jersey. So you wanna kinda uh, make sure that, you, you know, both are great, but you just wanna make sure that you are expecting the weight that you, you know, if you're expecting a cotton lycra that's a little thicker and you get the jersey it might not work for your pattern or whatever so just a heads up because that I have done that at Girl Charlie I've ordered one and thought I was getting the other but they're both really great though yeah I Linda I my Walmart seems to always be out of the bundles um, but I did get Last week I did get one um, piece of um, double brush poly that was there. It was $2 a yard. But our Walmart doesn't seem to keep it in stock. I can't believe there's that many people sewing in our town, but maybe. 
or maybe they just don't get any. I don't know. A cardigan or a jumper, Tony. Nice. Yeah, if in town here, I can sympathize with you, Tony, because we have basically Joann's and Hobby Lobby. That's it. So I order most everything online. Hobby Lobby, I like the quality they have. They just don't always have what you're looking for. And Joanne, you know, some of it's really great quality and some of it isn't. Let's, you know, there's um, some that, you know, that they're fleece pills. I don't like their fleece. And, you know, so, you know, there's just some good and some bad there, but, um, but that's all we have here. So if I want to make anything special, I need to order it. You can order them from the website from Walmart. That would be kind of cool. Uh oh, now I have to go back and see what word was auto, auto typed. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Sorry, tickled my funny bone, Phyllis. Yeah, any color does work. You're right. Um, what I got was a kind of a, a autumnal color print. I showed it to everybody last week, I think. I'll make it. I'll use it for some kind of muslin coming up, you know, a pattern test or something. Um, or, you know, actually, um, it's kind of pretty. I mean, I might make some palazzo pants with it or something like that. I don't know. I'll figure something out. I think what's fun is to have fabric that you can shop your stash. And, you know, the last time that my husband was laid off, because in, in structural engineering it just happens, um, the last time he was laid off and we were without an income, you know, uh, for a little while, and I had a, everybody always make fun of me of my fabric stash, but um, now I've made a believer out of him because I actually was able to keep sewing and every like birthdays and things like that that were going by at the time, I just whipped something up. So um, yeah, and what was really cool and I think a God thing is that we took that little side trip to Indiana to Zinks and I went there with the express purpose of getting fabric for Christmas. And so I have it all. I have everything I need. So I said, that's, you know, you couldn't ask for better. You know, I've got my machines were just upgraded. I have all the fabric I need for Christmas. So I'm good. You know, there's a lot of people who have a lot less. So I'm happy. So I'm looking here. Uh oh, my battery just died on my laptop, so I'm not going to be able to see your comments. <laughs> um, I might have to resort to a selfie. <laughs> but anyway, let's see, maybe it'll pop back on here. I didn't realize it was that low. <laughs> so, anyway, coming up this week, I have um, the serger video. I have Sunday, I'm going to have the game day video, and then there'll be one more thing in there. I'm not sure what. <laughs> I have a couple ideas. So um, I'll be doing um, some fun things I've been planning and have a lot of, I think, some fun ideas that you guys will like. Uh, oh, somebody, a lot of people in the comments this past week, everybody wanted to know about using the Cricut for your um, t-shirts and clothes. So I am going to do a video on the Cricut and probably that will be very basic. And then if the interest is there, I may then go ahead and um, like have a Cricut video every now and then to show 
different things that you can do. I still want to keep it related to sewing in some way, but um, I think it would be maybe a good addition. I use, use that a lot as well as my sewing machine, so um, I could probably come up with quite a few videos on that too. So um, just kind of see how the interest goes. A lot depends on like, I'll look at how many views and stuff that the Cricut video gets and then um, determine whether or not I should do a few more of those or not. And that's kind of what I do. I see what people like to watch and what you guys tell me in the chats. And I'm hoping maybe it'll come back on, not yet. I can't see your comments, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm gonna go over and read them real quick and then come back. <laughs> Willow wrap it in the octave coat. All right. All right. I read a few. Sorry, guys, up and down today. <laughs> Blanche, you got a lot of patterns. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, that is great. I really, um, I really am feels so, uh, what's the word? I feel indebted, I guess, to the designers that I like that take the time to like make patterns that can fit and oh, don't, don't require like a thousand. I mean, like you buy a McCall's or Simplicity, at least for me, you know, first of all, their sizing, okay? I wear an 18 and ready to wear usually, or 16, depending on the brand. But in a McCall's pattern, I have to buy a 24. <laughs> and that's just disheartening right from the get-go. Kind of reminds me of my, um, when I was homeschooling and teaching division to my son, and he was just having a hard time. And the book we were using said, you know, one was division, long division. And then the next day, the lesson said harder long division. Well, he saw the title and he just freaked out. He wasn't going to, you know, he wasn't going to touch it because it said harder. So, like, a lot of it's psychological. So if you tell me I'm a 24, I don't really want to sew that. I, not that, that sounds bad. There are plenty of people who are size 24, and that's beautiful. But nobody wants to be think that they're a size, size is bigger than what they are. Because the, especially since in, in those ready to wear or those um, big four patterns, they don't go up that high a lot of times. So it really cuts a lot of people out. I love the inclusivity, cl inclusivity that the designers have. And I think every woman is, you guys know that, I think every woman is beautiful no matter what size you are and you, ha you deserve the right to wear beautiful clothes that you love. And that's really, I don't know, that's really my, um, if I had to name one thing that I wanted to help people do is just to feel better about themselves by being able to kind of wear pretty things no matter what we look like. You know, I have a huge knee, but I still wear crop pants and, you know, my scar sticks out. It's, you know, I'm sure people look at it and go, Ugh. but you know, I still wear it. I still wear stuff because I, I don't, I'm very comfortable in my skin and I want everybody to be. So. I'll read a couple comments here. This is terrible. I should have charged my iPad. I feel left out because I can't join the conversation. Oh, it's back on. Yay. <laughs> um, 
Kim, about the Cricut, you're thinking about buying one. I am going to do, I had a silhouette for years. So I'm going to do not only a how-to beginning video with the Cricut, to, mostly just to show the possibilities, but also I'm going to do a silhouette versus Cricut. And there's kind of cons and pros on both sides, um, but I'm going to do that so that in case you are thinking of buying one and you want to know which of the two um, work better in your lifestyle. One might be better than the other. In the beginning, Silhouette was better because um, you could upload your own designs. You couldn't with Cricut at first, but now it's way creative. You can upload anything to it. Let me get back on here so I can see the comments. Oh my goodness, that was awful. I apologize so much. Hey, back. All right, sorry guys. I promise you that will never happen again. I'm going to, I, I use my um, iPad for music and you know, so it was used a lot at church today. And I must not have plugged it in last night because the battery just, I didn't realize it was so low. Yep, I agree, Jan. Wholeheartedly. Oh, <laughs> Brenda, that's sweet. Two T, twenty-four months. He she would only do the twenty-four months. I wonder what happened when she, when he had to learn how to drive. <laughs> oh boy. Nikki, a Cricut is a vinyl cutter, basically, or, well, it cuts a lot of things, but um, I used my Cricut to embellish t-shirts, like this one. This I did this one on the Cricut. Um, so you can do just anything with them. Um, you can make jerseys, you can do whatever. So um, I was just going to show you kind of how I do that. It's a really, you can cut a lot of things. You can cut wood, paper, fabric, uh, vinyl, all kinds of things. There's just the gamut, really. You can make stencils, um, just tons of things. It's great for Christmas crafting, for sure. Chris Renee says, I, I hate when finding a pattern to make only to find my measurements are outside the size range. That had happened to me a lot too, Chris, uh, with Big Four. Um, it's disheartening and a disservice to many, many women, I think. Um, because let's face it, none of us are, you know, I mean, no, no body is perfect. You know, we're perfect. We're just the perfect you, you know, you're just the perfect you. You're not the perfect McCall's pattern size 12. You're the perfect you. So they don't do very much to help people uh, with a few exceptions, like the Palmer and Plesh that, uh, patterns that they you can buy and it really helps you learn fit. Now those are good, I think. But there again, I don't think they come in a plus size very much or even you know it's just as bad to not have I know women who are so small that they have to buy little girls clothes that's not right either uh, Nancy you can scan a Cricut any place on the mat as well um, you can you can put the you can spread the pieces around anywhere. Um, you just have to uh, drag them. That's all. Yes, Karen, I agree. It did. And used to be curvy women were, you know, what people wanted to be. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I just want I just want everybody to be happy in their own skin. And uh, if you do diet. Do it for the right reason. Do it for health, not for how to look better or what you think would be better. 
You have the scan and cut? Great. <laughs> it just went out again. Um, I, you know, I didn't even look at the brother scan and cut. Or there's a Janome artistry as well. Um, I think there's, I think any of them can cut like SVG designs, but um, I'll probably have to do some research. So when I do that Cricut versus Silhouette video, I will do some research into those other ones. I haven't used them, but I have used extensively the Cricut and Silhouette. So um, I gave my Silhouette to my daughter-in-law because she is has a jewelry business and she's making um, earrings. So she wants to cut the cards to put the earrings on. So I gave it to her. I hope that she gets, I hope that she gets hooked on it and does a whole bunch of stuff with it because, um, but. The Cricut, my main reason I got the Cricut was because I could do everything from my iPad. And as sophisticated as Silhouettes are, they do not have a good app. They have one coming out, but it still has to be connected to a computer. So, yeah, it's not really the greatest um, setup for me. My iPad 2020, I, I opted to buy the the iPad Pro 2020 so that it would be a laptop replacement. So, of course, I don't know, it's plugged in. I don't know, maybe this one is, this isn't plugged in well or something. I don't know what the deal is, but it died again. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm gonna go read your comments here. Amen, Blanche. <laughs> Anything you can do with your um, Cricut that you can't do with your Silhouette, um, the big thing would be doing it from the iPad, like I said, because it's just, it's just difficult. Um, I wanted... I wanted to be able to just put my money in something because I edit my videos and everything on this and I'm paperless with my music at church as well so like I do everything on this iPad and um, that was the only thing I ever had to drag my computer out so it really needs to be updated but um, I wanted to just have everything in one place and the Cricut design space on the iPad is awesome. So I, uh, I like the fact that I can do it with my iPad. Let's see if we're back on yet. Ah! Oh, I will definitely be charging this better <laughs> next time. Well, I'm going to go over and read. If you guys, we're getting close to four, so I'm going to go over there. If you have any questions for me, um, I'd be happy to answer. I don't know. I was speaking with Verna um, online about um, using a, a leader to start uh, so your fabrics don't get pulled down in the hole in the hump jumper. And I told her if she was on, I would demonstrate that. So, Verna, please... Uh, Say hey if you're here, so I, and I'll show you that before I get off. Um, but I'm going to go see if you guys have any questions, and then at four o'clock I'll probably just sign off and plug this thing in. All right.
I'm super glad to know your name is Ginny. <laughs> Thank you for that. I won't forget this time. I'm bad sometimes with names, so I apologize. But um, my heart's in it, but sometimes I just am not good with names. But I will remember yours this time. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to sign off and go make pizza <laughs> and have a good pizza dinner with my husband and watch a little football and kick back. So I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your Sunday. And, you know, we haven't heard my neighbor today, so Cleveland must not be doing very good today or maybe they're not playing today. Anyway, have a great Sunday afternoon and evening and I will see you on the Facebook group probably won't have a video out tomorrow but I would imagine sometime Tuesday or Wednesday and then definitely one on Sunday so it'll be a double double whammy Sunday there'll be a video uh, collab with Natita and then our chat and if she's free maybe I'll even join her to join it or Maybe I'll even ask her to join us on chat. We'll see if, she'll, if she'd like to do that. Have a fantastic day, you guys. Happy sewing.